Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be starting a project called Creating Keys in Adobe Illustrator. We will be creating drawn artwork, drawing objects, adjusting their paths, combining objects into a simple, complex object. We'll be using groups as well and applying attributes to the combined objects. Not surprisingly, you'll see Illustrator's drawing tools to draw objects. You'll, for instance, you will use the rectangle tool to draw squares, the pencil tool to draw draw and sketch freehand lines, and the pen tool to create very accurate custom shapes. As you draw, the resulting line is called a path. Paths can take any shape, ranging from simple straight line to geometric shapes such as a star, to a series of smooth curves and sharp corners that create the outline of a file. I recommend looking at some keys. These are some good sample photos to get. I would avoid angled views or something very busy. A typical key has the head of it here, the bow here, the hole, shoulder. There's a code maybe if you're working in a large organization. Uh, the teeth or cuts and biting, it's also referred to as the tip. The warding is the groove and the blade itself, or stem. The key that we're creating is going to look something like this. You're going to see we even have a drop shadow on it. I am over here. I have my mouse buttons here, as well as keyboard shortcuts. So we're going to start with... You, we will be using two layers here. Well, let's go to layers. I'm going to move this up here because it's going to be in the way. Move that out of the way, too. On the layers, one layer will be for the wood background, and one will be for the keys. Okay, start with the keys and work from there. File New. We're going to go with the letter size here. We don't have to worry about anything else besides that because letter is common standard. If you go to inches, and that's not working. Okay, let's see. Inches there. It's 8.5 by 11. CMYK color, color. And I'm going to call it last name, first name, keys. That way it will save us some time. Click Create. Our documents here, we're going to start with the keys first. And the first part of the key we generally start with is the head of the key, the top. So you can choose any one of these, whether or not it's a rectangle tool, etc. Rounded rectangle tool. If you do not see the rounded rectangle tool, you might be on Workspace Essentials. And you see, when I right click, it's missing. So I'm going to go to Window, Workspace Essentials Classic. I'm just going to choose right now the rounded rectangle key right here. It's defaulting to white, so I'm just going to go over here and change it. Red, any color could be fine. And we can go adjust the scale of it. We can also use these little circles here and adjust the size of it. So you can see that's available. If you click again, you're going to get the option to make a, a duplicate one. You can, so you can see the differences here. I've got my red key here. The first thing I'm going to consider doing, and I'm going to go paste this in here so it's available. This is one of my keys here with the key ring here. See, 
control C, and then up. Oh, did I do a control V instead? Oh, that's bad. Control C. Yep, make sure you get the right one. Control V. Just can move it off the side so I have it as a reference. So I made the first one here. I'm going to go now, put in, change the color. Just to white so you can see it will help. Draw a new shape here. Choosing an off white here. Draw my shape in here. You can see it right here. I'm going to go over to properties. There's a fill in here, a white. You see the align tools, but I don't have anything else aligned. So it's not when I press on any of them, just going to go to the line to the middle of the page. So I must go over to the selection tool, the black arrow. Select them both. I can drag and select. Then select the horizontal align center. And now we also have here is the exclude to create a compound shape. What will happen is, and I'm going to show you right now, it's going to turn it white. Control Z. So what I can do, because I don't want it, if I put a lot of time and effort into it, I'm going to go want to choose, make sure that it's going to default to whatever color this is. I'm going to make this red. Use the eyedropper tool. Select the main part of the key. It's become part of it here. Same color. Then I'm going to use the exclude. So I have that done. The head of the key done. The key holes right here. Next, I'm going to put in the shoulder. Once again, I can use a rectangle tool here. And I'm going to want to line these up right now. So I'll choose that one. And I'm going to do as well the stem, the blade. Want to get that one in. And we have here, I'm going to make another one on the rounded to make the tip. And I'm just going to go now and rotate it 90 degrees. Control Z. I forgot to go to my selection tool. Make sure it's a mistake you're going to make. Get used to it. So I'm going to go over here now. Click. And this one I'm just going to bring in. Just big enough. And now I'm going to zoom in. Control plus. Bring it down a little bit. And over. So this is the tip of the key. So control zero. I've got these now. I'm on the selection tool. I'm going to left click and drag. Select it all. I'm going to line them up. Line horizontal center. And then I'm just going to go merge them. Key in part one of the key is done. Now, a couple things you can do to make the make teeth for the key. One of which is use the pen tool. Click. And then when I go over here, this is a little hard to see. I'm going to make it white so you can see it. Click OK. Off white up. Then when I bring this up, a little circle comes in here. I'm going to click. So the teeth are another layer. That's one way to do it. I'll just go to my selection tool. And just go merge them. You see it chose the previous color. That's okay. You can also just, once you have it all selected, I drop it once again. And then use your selection tool. So you got that done. I'll put some lines on the key. So we're going to go over to the line tool. 
Just going to draw a straight line. I'm going to click here and hold down shift for vertical. Going to the tip of the key here from the shoulder to the tip. It's a little thin. I'm going to make it wider. So I have one here. And I would copy it using the selection tool and alt, but they're going to be different lengths. Now, I started not holding down the shift key, and now I am. And you see the difference. It, uh, in the beginning, it was an angle there. So I have this one as well. So I have this. I'm ready to work with it. But I, when I move this, I don't want to merge it because I'll lose this here. I don't want to go over here, do this, because that will make it the one shape. You lose your lines. Control Z is your friend. So what I'm going to do, right click, group. That way, when I move it, change it, or rotate it, it's not going to be a nightmare. I can also, at any point now, go onto gradient here, at a gradient. And any color, and move this up out of the way. Let's see if I can move this up out of the way. Let's see. Try it now. Just going to add a blue in there. If I don't like where it's going, on the gradient, I can always change the angle. 45. And I'm just going to start throwing numbers in so you can start seeing it rotate. I'm using the up arrow key to change it. And I want rid of this one. I'm going to left click and pull straight down. So I've got another one in here. Click here. Double click. And let's put a yellow in here. This is just some color to add into it. A stroke is might be recommended. Think about something, two points, etc., something to offset it. Now, that's the first key. I'm going to move this over to the side here. You can drag it off the artboard, the white area, just to make it easier. I'm going to choose another tool, ellipse tool, hold down Alt and Shift, it will go out from the center. And I am have this beautiful gradient, and just change it to 90, 90, and I'm not liking 90, let's go to 180, see how that looks, oh, straight up and down 180, okay, we got that, I'm going to go with the hole. I've got the color already in there. And this one, I'm going to choose a different color just so that's easier to see. Go to with fill. And I'll be changing the color overall. I've gone to my selection tool. Select it both. And line it up. Once again, shoulder. Rounded rectangle. selection tool, which is V, if you need to go there. If you want to go with a regular rectangle, straight down. And once again, the tip. And I'm going to use an ellipse this time. Alt and Shift. Selection tool, move it in place. And now, once I have that done, select them all by left click and drag. Line them up, horizontal line center. And then use the Unite where you see the two shapes together. And if I want to choose the pre-existing gradient, I can use that or I can choose another one. Just by double clicking, change it up. So I'm having some contrasting colors here. If I don't want a color, I can pull it straight down. Left click and drag. That way it will pull straight down. Now I don't have the hole in there. 
because I merged it. I made that mistake. So what I'm going to do here, I have this color already. I, if I choose a new shape, like this, and I will, once again, go through it using a magenta. Go up to the selection tool. And I will go to my select them both again. You can use shift at any time too. And then exclude. But what's going to happen is it's going to make it all this color. So I can use my eyedropper here, select this, and it becomes part of it. And it's not going to override the color you have already there. So I have this one here, but I still have to put teeth. I didn't put teeth on there. I deselected it, so there's no bounding box or anchor points are visible. I'm going to choose another line here, another color. You can always go, besides the pen tool, which I'm going to go once more over, you can also go, and I'm going to, uh, under the brush tool here, oh, it's under the shaper tool, the pencil tool. And you can see here, it's not wanting to play nice. So I'm going to do select, go over to our pencil, I'm going to just draw and go back over to here. And you see it just expanded it. Went from anchor point to anchor point. So that one's done. That's two. We can make ten of them. And when I put them over each other, you're going to see that now they're starting to look like, almost like a key ring. Like they're stacked upon each other. Very much what we're used to seeing. Deselect it. And I will choose a new shape. This one, I'm going to put a few other shapes in it. So I'm going to create this shape. Click on here, and this is getting in the way. I see it's kind of one of the back problems with this system. The on the mouse there getting in the way. You can go using the selection tool, shrink it down. And I'm going to place these here. These two here, I'm going to just drag straight down. You can see, perhaps see the guideline there. A little hard to see. And now I'm going to do both of them again. Going down, having these selected. I'm going to use the exclude. So I can you can see these already been done. I will select these next. And we're going to go to... If I put it right here, it's going to look the same. But if I go up here, vertical line top, vertical and or center, I'm going to go center here. You see, I did not I made a boo boo on those. I did not select both of them. Clicking here, and I'm going to hold down shift, click, then move them up a little bit. And move them over with the arrow key once or twice. You could, with those, selection tool, drag. And once again, I'm going to exclude them. So I've got my keys here, a holes here for the key. Rounded. Rounded rectangle. And using the other rounded rectangle here for the blade of the key, the stem of the key, and the tip. Selection tool. And I'm going to just try it. This one is a little different. These two here. This is going to be a part of the tooth here. So I'm just going to merge these two right away. And, select, and these, when I select them, it's going to be slightly off center. You're going to see. 
a little bit off center here. That's a sacrifice I had to make. I'm going to merge these together. I will put my lines on, go back up here. And I didn't do them here either. So when I get to here, do my lines, see. Bring it straight down and make them a little wider. The stroke a little bit lighter, wider here. And I'm holding down shift when I do this. Makes it a whole lot easier. Select them. I am going to now right click and group them so that we have those done. And if I want to now, should I want to adjust something on this? I want to adjust this. Kind of the fill is a little confused, so I'm going to double click on it, go into isolation mode here. It says it's a group. It says it's a compound path. You don't you we lost our lines here. So I can now go select this. Go to fill, put in a gradient. If you want to change the color here. Now I might want to reuse one of my gradients. So I'm going to use the eyedropper tool. If I want to adjust it now, I can do that at any point. I'm kind of wanting to get some different colors in there. I realize that what's going to happen is they're all going to blend right in. And it's going to be a little difficult to see. So we've got this here. I'm in the compound path. I can go to my group now. You see the lines I'm layer and then finally out of that. So when I want to move it using the selection tool, drag it. I would rotate this one. But I've neglected this key here so i'm just going to put my line here once again starting at the shoulder working my way down hold down shift once again hold down shift and that one i'm using the arrow key up just to line on this up right here selection tool just grab the, what I want to grab, not this key. I'm not going to grab the whole thing. I just grab the bottom over here. Right click, group. Selection tool here. I grab the group, place it here. It's on the layer, it's slightly below. Think about your keys you want to make. I'm left clicking and rotating it. Figuring this is a common type of key here. Change the color over so we can see it easier. Blue will be for the time being. I'm going to round it a little bit. So, the, so it's more of a realistic key. So it doesn't cut holes in your pocket. And I'm going to click OK. It's a cute little shape here. Bring it over and Control Z. I, I'm going to go to Selection. You can transform your items just by dragging on them. Have this one. I have not put the holes in here. So I'll go back up here. Choose my Polygon Lasso tool. And go back to selection, place it on up here. Line them up, and you can do this all at one time. Don't get caught up. And I've, if you make a mistake at one point, you can exclude things at any point you want. Go with my rectangle, and with this, I'm going to go back up here. Select, and then align them, horizontal align, merge them. With that now, right click on your rounded rectangle, drag, go to V, oh that's the move tool, selection tool, selection tool, move tools Photoshop. Bring it on up over, zoom in, control plus, control plus, control plus. Scale it a little bit. 
bring it down. And I see it's a little bit bigger, so I'm just going to bring this in a little bit. Deselect the whole thing and bring it in again. Click anywhere on it to just to deselect it. This one I'm pleased with. I'm just going to now select the whole thing and merge it. Should you have a little problem with a little thing like that, do not worry. Use your direct selection tool. Click uh, over here. And you can grab this handle. Strain it straight out and it will be no problem. Control zero. I'm going to zoom in again. Spacebar. They don't show an icon for spacebar, just the way it works, sorry. And I'm going to go with the pen tool, get a pencil tool first. And you can start over here. This is very jagged, kind of rough. You can see now it's got two lines there. I'm going to merge the shapes. And... They don't want to be merged, so I'm going to move it in over. That's interesting. I'm not... Move out of... Get out of that. Isolation mode. Just see the whole thing again. Nope. It's... That's the way it is. I didn't draw it in deep enough. If I do Control z and I start over again, I'm just going to do that for the sake of it. Pencil tool. Once again, we see here we don't have the whole thing because I did not start with on a path here. So if you have like this, that won't work either. So I'm going to start right here on the anchor point. Very rarely keys look like this. So we have that done. And next, I'm going to draw my lines. Once again, starting up here, hold down shift, drag straight down. Start at the shoulder again up here, drag straight down. If you want to do it, another one, click. Now, control minus, control minus. Selection tool. Let's get that one in here. And I'm not going to align anything because that's going to, that will be fun here. I'm not going to use any of these here because this will make it that all these disappear if I click Pathfinder Align Unite. We don't want that. Control Z. So what I'll do is right click and group. Remember to group. Right click group, and now, as I recall. This one I can place here, and I'm going to rotate it. Put it out over here. It's also very big, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. If you want to place anything on there, that's okay. Choose different types of keys. I would. Uh, most keys do not come as a star, but you can try one. Here's a star. Put in a fill. Now I went over to the to the direct selection tool here, and I'm going to click over here. I'm going to make it a little softer, something more likely to be in a pocket. And I'm just going to go back to my selection tool, hold down Alt, and I duplicated it. I will reduce this in size, move it into place here, see how it looks. Drag, select on the left mouse button, align them, and then exclude them over here. This only pops up when you have two shapes uh, two shapes selected. So I have that now done. Going over back over to my 
rounded rectangle tool. I'm just going to put my shoulder in. Then my stem or blade. The tip. Rotate it. Once again, I'm going to leave this on the side over here. I will select these first, not the tip. Align them. Merge them. Then I will select the tip. And then just merge it because it is already, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see. Hold down the space bar. And you can see it's kind of aligned there, and I'm just going to merge it. Unite it. So now, control minus. Going here, pen tool. I'm just going to make a whole shape here. I start to the right of the blade of the key. I'm going to go up here, back to where I started from. There's a little circle that appears. Click on it. So we have a complete shape here. Select the selection tool, select, and I will merge them. Holding down the, clicking on the line tool, holding down shift, create new lines. And just move that up a little bit. Selecting the key. Choose a gradient, change the gradient. And as many as you want to add, you can, feel free. You can also just go the standard grays, etc. You can do that as well. To so move this along now, Up, oh, Control Z, and I didn't do something. I forgot to group it. So, select the whole thing, right click, group it. So, we're going to now go over to the key ring itself. The key ring is very easy to do. It seems difficult, but it's not. We're going to cho just choose the ellipse tool, right click here, and drag. Now, if you don't like the way it's showing up, hold down Shift, Alt, and drag. I am going to empty this fill. Give it a stroke of about 10. And I can always go and make it a gradient. If you can't see the gradient, just stay with black or black or dark gray, which is fine. You can always change it later, and I'll make it just a tad thicker. For the, so I have this one here. I will duplicate it. Hold down, go over to the selection tool, hold down Alt, click and left mouse drag. Come on. Okay, had to click off and click it again. Now this one, this is broken up into, if I click here, you're going to see each one of the anchor points here. So I'm just going to use the direct selection tool here. I'm going to delete a quarter of it. Select over here, select this section right here, drag. You see the handles here? I will hit delete. And move this into position. After I go back to my, I am on my selection here. right here, and I will select this one as well. And everyone's kind of curious why I did that. Because you cannot see the ring, you cannot see it going through the hole at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my, oh, down to my layers here, open up the layers, and we have the ellipse tool here. We have ellipse one and two. This is the ellipse I'm working with here, I will drag it to the bottom of all the keys. So only now, when we zoom in, 
we see the it's going through the hole here into the hole and then coming out the bottom of it. So it appears like it's more 3D here. Control zero. Now, while I've got this whole thing selected, I can go up here, select the whole thing, which I have my image here, which I really should have put that on another layer. This one, I will add a new layer here. Drag the image in. Drag it to the bottom here. So it's on its own layer. I'm going to lock that one. I'm at, I don't need it, but I'm going to turn it off anyway. This one here. Here's my keys. You might have to do, do more keys or less, depending upon the requirements of the assignment. And now I'm going to go to Effect. Stylize, drop shadow. And you can see it already coming in here a little bit. Whether or not you want to use multiply or normal. Make, check your opacity if you cannot see it. The color. And the XY offset is where it's going to end up. So if I move it over a little bit, you see the big difference there. X. The X is your left to right. Y is the up and down. I'm just going to move it down a little bit here. So we have a little bottom here. Click OK. I am going to now lock this layer. I don't want to mess with this layer anymore. Add a new layer. I'm going to call this one Keys. Double click on it. What we're going to do next is I added my layer here. I'm going to call this wood, wood grain or wood. We're going to be playing with the blend tool. I've locked the keys. I'm just going to turn them off so they're not in the way. I'm going to go control minus once so I can get it there. I'm going to utilize. I recommend for any type of wood grain. You can get really complicated, but too many lines will get very complicated. You can do a simple one here using the curvature tool here. And you only want to use about four to five anchor points. So that is, and have a stroke here with one color. I'm going to go black for now. Contrast, click OK. And we're going to use about four or five anchor points. We're going to start on this side over here, creating off the artboard and continue over here. Just going to be easier, much easier to see. Click, hold down shift, and you, I'm just, I'm not, I'm just moving it now. So that's two anchor points here. One, two, three, four, and that's five maximum. Hit escape, click up here, do another one. One, two, three, four. Five, escape. One, two, three, four, five. And this one, escape, it's going to be much shorter. So it's going to, I'm going to make it a little bit longer. And the fourth and final one, once again, press escape again. That's one, two, three, four. Four or five here, escape, select them all. Now at this point, if you want to change your wood grain width, etc., it's a good time to do it. Just go over to properties and change the width. Make that one six pixels, reverse 19 over here. This one here is 19. This one I'm just going to choose again. I will make it about... <laughs> nine. So there's a little change in the width. I'm clicking and dragging. You can also press, hold down, shift, and if I can actually select them. 
shift will do that. So, the left clip mouse button and the clicking is a whole lot faster. I will go to Object Blend. Options. Put in the options. We're going to go with Specified Steps. Four between each one of them. Four between each line is enough. You can try more. Doesn't always work. I will align to the path. Click OK. Nothing's happened. We have it selected. We told it what we want. Now we're going to actually tell it to go through with the action. So we're going to go to Blend, Make. Okay, we've got the wood grain here. Looks good. I'm pleased. I can change the colors at any point if I want to, and I will be deciding that in a moment. And next, I will be adding a background color over the artboard so the white is not showing through. Right click on the lips tool, choose the rectangle tool. And there's nothing in there, just because a stroke around the rectangle. So I'm going to go to. Click on the stroke. None. The, I'm going to go up to fill. And you can choose a gradient. You can get into a lot of different colors. You can just choose brown here. And that doesn't contrast, but it's hiding our layers. So I'm going to our wood grain. On the, so I'm going to go to layers. Click on the for the wood layer here. I'm going to click on the drop down arrow. See the rectangle is highlighted with the little square next to it. Click on it, left click, and drag down. So now we can see that. If you want to choose another color or gradient, that is fine too. Because you might say to yourself, you know, I really like the gradients. And I want to put something like that in there. Absolutely go for it. There's gradient hiding away. What we've got here, I'm going to add a little bit of brown colors in here. And I can now take this gradient here, should I want to, select, oh, get off the, I was on the tool, control Z. Go to the selection tool, select this our blend here of our wood grain. And you have the stroke here. And you see the color combinations you get. I want something a little different. I can click here to do that. And you guys see, wow, what a difference. What I'm going to do now, because I don't want this fill in here, I can now go click on this arrow to flip it and then click on uh, the fill, swap out the stroke in the fill. This is stroke is now being activated. Now I'm going to go to fill here, click on the clearing it out here with the none. It's also the same things happening here on the fill. If you don't like that one, you can always rotate it. And try that too. There's lots of options with this. Control minus to see what I'm working on again. And if you do not like this fill or the stroke on it. You can always adjust it. So I activate the stroke again up here. You can always choose different colors. So that they show up better and have more contrast. That's going to be up to you.
Hold down the space bar, position it. Turn, go back to layers. Turn on the keys. We have it here. I'm not liking this one here. I'm going to make it a look. I think I'm just going to go back over to my properties and go straight with a plain stroke, dark stroke here. So I can see that a little bit better. Something a little bit easier to see. Finally, name on the bottom right hand corner here. 12, go to te uh, the type tool. Deselect that, go back to my type tool. And we see it's 12 point there, that's great. Zoom in a little bit. This one, with everything going on here, it is very, a little difficult to see. I will go to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow again. This time, though, I will choose White here. Click OK for the color. And I'm just going to bring it up. You can see I'm... Just going to move this up now and position it right underneath it using the XY offset. So we have that there. Control zero. And turn the go to the layer, turn the key back on. And we have the keys on, actually, and we don't see them because the wood grains above it. So I'm going to just click, left-click, drag, and move this below the keys here. We have the keys here. We have the shadow. We have our name and the wood grain. Everything's done. And like I said, you can always go change anything as you're working on them. As long as you unlock them. Click on the key ring here. I select the other one because I want both to occur at the same time. Properties and stroke. Should you want to put in a gradient. Now the gradient's going to show up a whole lot better on this one here. Deselect. You have your gradient here. Here's a gradient on it. Give it a little bit more. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching.